Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to show you how I make a prom dress from scratch. I recently had the opportunity to design this lovely gown for my client who is attending her prom this year. So to do this I headed to my favourite fabric store Barry's in Birmingham and they have every fabric here from sequins, wool, satin, chiffon. So this is like my go-to place. So I had an initial design consultation with my client where I asked her what she wanted and did some fabric sourcing and she chose this lovely ice blue colour for her dress. So I came to Barry's and I got four and a half metres of Duchess satin and then I got four metres of organza to go over the top of the skirt just to give it a bit of flair and to make it princess like and then I got one metre of interfacing just to give the bodice more structure and just to give it that kind of flawless look. I also got an invisible zip and some hook and eyes as well so before I start I am just going to pre-shrink my fabric with the iron and then I'm going to take the front pattern piece of the skirt and I am going to pin it to the fabric and then I'm going to cut this single pattern piece out three times yep three times because there is so much fabric in the front piece there's about four and a half meters in the skirt alone so I cut this out three times and this also has inverted pleats and gathers in it so I'm just going to mark on where the pleats need to go with it and I'm just going to use some tailor's chalk to mark my point as a point of reference that I know where to pull each bit of fabric to, to create the inverted pleat. Now these look a lot harder than they actually are but once you've marked your point of reference it's fine and it's pretty easy to do and then all I do is use um, some dress pins to secure them into place until I am ready to head over to the sewing machine just to do a stitch to hold them down. putting the inverted pleats into the front skirt panel I then just put this panel to one side and then I repeat the same process two more times on the other two front skirt panels it seems like there's a lot of fabric in this skirt which there is but this is what is going to give the skirt a lot of volume because I'm going to gather this after I've pleated it I then do a stitch along the top of each skirt panel just to hold the pleats in place and then when I have done this I head back over to the table to lay out more fabric to cut out the back. So I only need to cut out two of the back skirt panels because it hasn't got as much volume as the front and then I'm just going to cut out the bodice and then pin the bodice pieces together. Before I cut out the bodice, I was sure to make sure I fused it with a lightweight interfacing. It's an iron on one, so you iron this onto each piece of the bodice and then you pin the bodice together and then you stitch it on the sewing machine, leaving a seam allowance of 1.5 centimeters just in case you need to let the dress out or take the dress in. And then when you stitch it, stitch it together, you're gonna to take it over to the iron and press all your seams to give it that really nice finish on the outside. Here I'm just joining all the front sides together and then when I've joined the, joined the front sides together I'm going to join the back sides to the front sides as well so there's quite a bit of stitching to do here because the lengths are quite long but it's fine, it's pretty straightforward. I'm done stitching all the sides together I'm gonna to head back over to the iron and give the seams a press for the time being I'm just gonna put the outside of the dress to one side and focus on the lining so I lay the pattern pieces out in a way that's very efficient so that I don't waste any fabric at all and the lining is three centimeters shorter than the actual dress that you can't see on the outside and I cut it out in exactly the same way as I did the normal dress and I just go ahead and I stitch the sides up and put all the pleats in like I did before so it's literally just like creating a second dress so I then overlock all the sides on the overlocker and the reason that this color 
is on the overlockers because it's going to be underneath the dress and no one's going to see this so that colour is fine and then I'm going to do a gather stitch then I change the length of my stitch to four and then I change the width to about four or five and that way it's much easier for me to pull the thread in order to gather it so to do this I do it a centimetre from the edge and do it just underneath the stitch that I did to do the secure stitch for my pleats and then I go ahead and I just pull the hanging thread in order to gather this so I try and do this as carefully as possible so that I don't break the thread and I also try and do this quite quickly because this will fray quite quickly if I don't do it efficiently so once you finish gathering it should look something like this and then you are ready to attach it to the bodice when attaching it to the bodice and then you go to put it underneath the sewing machine make sure that the gathered part is actually at the bottom and the straight bodice part is at the top because it will make it much easier to stitch and it will kind of ease the gathers out a little bit more um, and after I've done this on the lining I then put the lining to one side and then I go ahead and I overlock the side seams on the outside of the main fabric of the dress After overlocking it, it's then time to gather it at the top, but it is too thick, so unlike with the lining, I couldn't do it on the sewing machine, so I'm actually just going to do this with a needle and thread and do it by hand, and as you can see, it works in just the same way. After that, I cut out the front piece again three times in organza, and then I put in the inverted pleats and use pins to hold them in place until I take it over to the sewing machine to then, I decide to French seam this because I don't want the ordinary seams to be seen on the outside. So I'm gonna stitch one centimeter and then I'm going to trim it away and then I'm going to fold it back in on itself and stitch it so that you get this lovely French seam on the inside instead of the normal seam. I'm then going to overlay the organza over the top of the normal skirt fabric and then I'm going to pin it together and then stitch it together on the sewing machine. I'm sure to do this super slow because it's very thick at this point and I don't want any bit not to be stitched so I just do it super slow. I take my time and every now and again I stop and look to make sure it has been done correctly. the bodies to the skirt and I'm sure to even out all the gathers and all the pleats to make sure that they fit the bodies properly before I stitch it. The next stage is to put the invisible zip in, this is 20 inches long and then I shortened it slightly and I'm just going to change the normal foot over to an invisible zip foot so that the zip cannot be seen from the outside of the dress and I put the zip 0.5 centimeters away from the edge of the fabric because this has a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance and I just go ahead and stitch and then I test the zip by doing it up to make sure that it is working properly and that all my seams match up at the back as well and after this stage I am going to do the arm strap which goes across the shoulder and across the top of the dress and needs to be caught in between the lining and the main fabric. So using my client's measurements I cut a strip of fabric that is seven centimeters wide and then I go ahead and I refer back to my pattern piece to ensure that I'm going to mark this in the right place and I just use some tailor's chalk to mark my points on and this is just to show where the strap is going to be 
caught in with the lining and the fabric and then the part where she puts her arms through that is not going to be caught in any fabric that is just going to be left loose at which point I'm going to cut into the arm strap and fold the seam allowance inwards and then just do an edge stitch to make it look neat. So here is the mark that I'm going to cut. I'm going to snip in 1.5 centimeters. You can't snip past the line, you can't snip before the line, you have to actually snip to the line in order for this to work effectively. And here I am just going to snip it and then fold it in carefully. Attaching the bardo fold over strap to the top of the main bodice, I am then going to take the lining and put the right side of the lining and the right side of the dress together and then I am going to stitch along the top of it really carefully, making sure to catch the bardo over fold over bit in the top as well and then I am just going to fold the dress onto the right side so that you can see a dress starting to form. Here I'm just going to do an edge stitch along the top of the lining and that is just to ensure that the lining does not roll over to the front when my client tries it on. This keeps the dress in place. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the hem. These are like the last stages of doing the dress it's been a long process but the hem is definitely probably one of the longest parts it's a very long hem it's about four and a half meters so i'm just going to double turn it one centimeter first and then another centimeter so two centimeters in total i'm just going to go ahead and just do a stitch along the bottom of the organza and then i'm going to do the same on the normal dress fabric as well and then i do the same on the lining so in total that's three hems it's done it's time to get a bit crafty and I'm going to do some embellishing with some silk organza flowers along the top of the dress so I take some Dylon dye and I mix it in with 500 milliliters of warm water and I have beside me three liters of warm water in a stainless steel pot with five tablespoons of salt and then I add the dye to the water I stir it in I take these white flowers that I got from John Lewis and I stir them into the China blue dye for 15 minutes and then I leave them in the pot of dry for one hour and then I take them out after an hour and I leave them to dry overnight and this is the lovely result we have these beautiful organza flowers <music> just got a few finishing touches to do like I'm just gonna give it a really really good steam now and I'm just going to put some flowers some silk organza flowers at the top I'm really happy with the way the dress has turned out I'm gonna sew in the back neck label and I'm gonna add the flowers and that's it it's done and dusted and ready to hand over to the client I'm just going to give the dress a good steam and then I'm going to attach the flowers by hand, by hand sewing on and then I am finished! Yay! I'm really happy with how the dress turned out. Thank you for watching guys and I will see you in my next video. Okay, bye!